morning, everyone, and welcome to today's MIOSH webinar aimed at revolutionising workplace safety training. I am absolutely thrilled to have you all here today as we embark on a journey to enhance safety awareness in your work. On behalf of MIOSH, I'm delighted to say that we are partnering with My Brand Digital this event. Today, we are diving deep the e-learning sessions, which have been crafted to transform how we approach safety training. Today, we have Glenn Mora behind My Brand Digital's e-learning content development with a stellar track record in delivering top-notch educational experiences. Glenn brings unmatched expertise to the table. We are also joined by one of our consultants, Antonio Flores, who will be taking us through how to conduct a course with the highest level of flair and enthusiasm that only Antonio possesses. And together with My Brand Digital, MyOSH is unleashing a plethora of tools and insights that will reshape the way that your team perceives safety training. Now, before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Today's session will be recorded. So if you need to leave throughout or if you're unable to make it at all, um, we'll send it out to everybody and you can rewatch it afterwards. So no stresses there. Now, we also want you to be as interactive as possible. So please feel free to pop in any questions, thoughts or ideas that you may have into the Q&A box or the chat box um, and we'll throw to you all throughout the session. Again, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Now let's kick this webinar off and embark on a journey towards a safer, safer tomorrow, sorry, with Glenn and Antonio. Over to you, Glenn. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just jump onto my presentation. Okay, so you can see that okay, Antonio? Oh, good, fantastic. Okay, so my name is Glenn Mora. I'm the founding partner of My Brand Digital. Um, we're an e-learning content design and development company, and we're now a proud partner with MyOSH, supplying a library of the most popular e-learning modules, um, which are all gonna be available on the MyOSH platform. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I started my business career as a founding partner of Dash Digital, which is a branding graphic design agency in Subiaco. So that business, we had a um, great bunch of people that designed beautiful um, graphic design content. Um, and we were also specialists in app development, web development, all of that sort of thing. Um, I've just got a couple of samples of our work. As you can see, I've always kind of been in this industry, I suppose, of making things look good, always keeping the client's brand in mind. So, for instance, we worked with West Track. We did a lot of their branding work, um, marketing material. Um, we also um, built mobile apps, um, websites. Um, we would always work with a client's style guide and their branding. And then as the company kind of moved on and we got more technical and more technical, we actually um, developed a, a product. It's a bit of technology which, um, or e-learning technology, should I say, that was listed on the ASX in 2015. And as you can see, even back then we were developing e-learning content. So we we're also working with Alcoa there, Automotive um, Holding Group, which is now Eagers, WBHO Civil, and I'm still working actually with some of those clients now. Um, and then the Velpic was, was listed on the um, ASX in 2015. And then in 2018, I moved on from that company and I started a company called My Brand Digital. And for five years now or four years, I've been developing e-learning content. Um, 
that e-learning content, as you can see, is pretty slick, very nicely branded. I've pretty much brought my old skills of the design and branding, and I've made a real effort to make these this content look as good as any content I believe that's on the market at the moment. Um, and there's quite a few different modules there. I'll just flick through a couple here. And then I'll go more into this in a minute, but I'll tell you a little bit more about my business. Um, I also create custom e-learning modules for companies. So I work with a lot of uh, companies where I develop their company inductions, um, HR and OHS training, policy documents, et cetera. Um, some of the clients I work with are NRW, created a psychosocial module here, EDL, Environmental Management Awareness, John Holland, um, Foundation and HSE. I've got some government clients, Unity Water, um, Risk Management module we created for them. Central Highlands Regional Council, which was a general induction. The YMCA, I work with YMCA in Queensland and Victoria, um, created quite a bit of content for them. Even things like New South Wales Institute of Sport, we created a foundation for nutrition, for sports performance. So it's really any topic that you have content, we can turn that into an e-learning module. And I think over time, there'll be a lot more of that um, online kind of learning. Um, so now I'm very proud to be a partner of Myosh. Um, I really do believe that they have uh, the most versatile workplace safety solution going around. Um, it's the reason why you know I wanted to partner up with them. Um, I actually have quite a few clients that use their pro product, which is fantastic. Um, they now have a library of all this content here, and this library will be constantly growing, so there'll be no end to it. But to start with, we um, really built what we believe, and from clients' feedback were the modules they really required. So for HR, um, we've got bullying, sexual harassment, diversity, inclusion, customer service, health and wellbeing, fatigue management, um, cybersecurity, psychosocial hazards, privacy awareness, drug and alcohol, fraud, bribery, complaint resolution, and then health and safety. I won't go through all of these, but hazardous manual tasks, asbestos safety, working at heights, working confined spaces, hazardous manual tasks, plant and equipment. Most of my clients with a blue collar workforce um, use a lot of these modules. Um, in their library. So these modules here, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this, but they all have Australian voiceover. And procedure dispute. Customer dissatisfaction. So all, all my modules... Um, I'll just wait for that to finish. All my um, modules have Australian voiceover. These are professional voiceover artists. Um, we pick ones with personality and that, which is so important. They all have the little jingles and, you know, feel good kind of jingles in the background. We created interactivities all throughout these. So it's not just sitting there watching slides and listening to someone and having keywords coming across the screen. You also have to click buttons and you've got to be involved in the learning. Um, we built great little scenarios and we're building more of these. So these are real life scenarios where something could happen and we've basically replayed it with little characters and that sort of thing. All our e-learning has knowledge checks um, with little buttons that you press. Um, it's like a casino. If you get it right, there's a great little jingle. If you get it wrong, it's kind of a burn. Um, fun little music in the background. So just trying to keep people involved in the learning and mixing it up. Then I think what's a really, a really strong part of what we do is being able to custom brand these modules to our clients. So any of these modules, our clients will give us their um, style guide, they'll give us their logos and also access to their images. And we can put their logos in there, their branding, 
um, and swap out images because quite a few of these libraries might not relate to their business. So they go, look, uh, here's some of my images. We put those in and then straight away when their staff watch them, it's like they're watching their company's e-learning instead of someone else's e-learning. And I think that's really powerful. And another powerful thing that we're doing is we can add content to these. So we've got certain clients that have specific information to their business and may want to add it to one of our modules. So they will just give us a script and then we'll get the same voice recording. We'll drop it in there, turn it into part of that so it doesn't look like they're two different e-learning, make it the same kind of same looking module. And um and that works great for a lot of our clients as well. We have some that do that with all their modules. We have others where they go, no, this module is perfect. Don't need to add anything to it. Then kind of um, lastly, this is the part we love, as you can imagine. Um, we have to follow the West Australian legislation and Queensland government legislation and a whole lot of other websites. We subscribe to all of these. We get um, feeds on a regular basis. If legislation changes, we have to look into it. Um, it's a quite a big job actually, but this is part of you having access to these modules that if things change, we'll update it and deliver you a new SCORM file to upload into the MIOSH system. So that's all part of our job, not yours. Um, and then I suppose lastly, it's a subscription model. Um, the way the subscription model works is that you can have you can um, pay a yearly subscription for 10 modules, 20 modules, or 32 modules. And depending on the size of your business, whether you're zero to 200 staff, um, 200 to 1,000 staff, et cetera, there's a little bit, a bit of a different plan, the price changes just a little bit and you can um, look at them, talk to Myosh about that or myself. And I think that's about it. So I'll put you back. I hope that all worked okay. Um, I'll stop Perfect. sharing Thank here. You, Glenn. Thank you. Um, I, think, I think what you were saying is so incredibly true. It's so powerful as an employee to when you have to go through and do any sort of e-learning or um, induction into a workplace it's really really um it just makes it that little bit more interesting and that little bit more um relatable if you're doing something that's branded and that's customized and that's personalized and it's not just seeming to be like everyday run of the mill type thing like um it makes you more interested and involved and i think it's you've hit the nail on the head there um which is why we are so so very excited to join forces with you i think together with our online learning platform and your product, we're just, uh, I'm so, so, so excited. So now without further ado, I would love for you guys to experience the fabulous Antonio. Now he, and that's not to say you're not fabulous too, Glenn. We love you too. Um, Antonio is one of our senior consultants here at Myosh and he's going to show you basically start to finish of going through one of the courses of Glenn and my brand digital and show you all what you'll experience, how it works within Glenn's system, as well as within the Myosh platform as well. So without any further hiccups or any further delays, take it away, Antonio. All Actually, right. I might stop you first as I usually do, just butt in. Um, if anybody has any questions or any um thoughts or ideas, please make sure you continue to pop them into the Q&A box and, uh, and we'll answer them all shortly for you. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, before I start my presentation, I'd like to thank you everybody for being here today. I know it's the Thursday before Easter, but you made it. So we're really glad that you are here. I'm very excited. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, like Christina said, she put me on high pedestal and challenge accepted. <laughs> so uh, my name is Antonio. I'm one of the consultants at Myosh, and I love anything that has to do with learning. Uh, and I love how Myosh can really make an impact in your business, especially when it comes to saving lives. And that to me, that's the driver. Like, okay, this product is amazing. This software is great. We're changing how people look after the team. And that's very important, very close to my heart. 
but learning is my jam in training. So I'm so happy to be able to show you what Glenn has created for us uh, and how beautifully it links with our system. Uh, so I get to do the fun stuff uh, and I have chosen a very easy course, which I'm gonna keep you engaged. And at the end, there's five quick, quick, quick questions very easy because you know it's the Friday before Easter, it's the Thursday before Friday Easter, uh, and we're gonna do it together. So I will remind you, hey, put in the chat the answer to the questions, and they're very easy questions. So it's only ten minutes about that, uh, and like Christina said, if you have any questions, pop it in the chat. All right, so I'm about to share my screen now. So give me one sec, and I'm ready here. Amazing. So through the the presentation, I'll be also highlighting, and I'm gonna be looking at a different screen, just letting you know. I'll be highlighting the things that Glenn mentioned as in the jingle on the courses, the sounds for the animations, uh, the real scenarios. So we're gonna see a real uh, module or a real training module happening. All right, so let's get started. So this is our Myo uh, online learning platform. So what you see right now, I'm logged in as a user, Martin Manager. Uh, and I see what courses I, are active. That's because I'm a, an admin person, but if I'm an everyday user, it will go here, they will go here and they will see what they have been enrolled, what they are in progress, what they have completed will show here. Now, I haven't signed up myself for the course yet because I wanted to show you live how to do that. So look at how simple it is. If I need to enroll someone, I go uh, to the admin section when it says enrollment. Uh, there's two options here. If the person doing the course is a visitor, then you can act, set up as a public invitation. They don't need to be a user or have a login to Myers, and I'll explain more very, very soon. But right now, I'm going to pick from our Myers uh, system, from your Myers system context, right? So here, what course we need? So easy, I just go evacuation. And then, okay, who is going to do this course? Who do we need to enroll? So I'm, go, I'm going to enroll myself a Martin a manager at the moment. So there you go, Martin manager. Perfect, I enroll. I'll come back to this very soon. Uh, but remember, I mentioned, if somebody is not a user of Myers because it's a visitor or is a contractor, anybody that doesn't have a login, does not require a login to your system, you go to any of the courses and there'll be the option to activate a public invitation. Right? So this is where you add all the different information about the course in this section, in the admin section, you can save the course, you say how long the course is going to be. This is like the behind the scenes of your content uh, public uh, uh, uploading. And then you see here now that I have public invitation, I can share that person a link or put a QR code and put it in the main desk or reception or, oh, you need to do this course before you can go into the premises, something like that. All right, so this is now very easy, but let's go back. Now, if you see, I can see now, oh, this course is now on my courses because I just enrolled myself and it's not started versus these ones are in progress. Very nice and easy. I love the graphics and it's very uh, nice and visual. And the good thing is your employees or yourself, you only see what you've been assigned to. You don't have to see 200 courses available that you have because then you'll be like, oh my God, which one is mine? Which one is mine? Oh, oh, yes, here, no. We, you only see what you need to see. It's brilliant. So let's get ready. So please remain seated and keep your hands in the car at all times, like in you know every ride at a roller coaster kind of thing. So here, so we access the course. It gives you a little bit of a description what the course will be. Uh, and it's just simply, I just go start course. So let's get on this journey together. Now, when you click start course, it takes a few seconds to load the file. And it will open on a different window, which I'll bring across, so don't worry. So here, your course has been launched in a new window. Yeah, fantastic. So I just bring it across. Now, because I cannot hear you or see you, I would love you to send me some reactions. Like if you have the reaction button enabled, send me some reactions so I know you are watching and you are engaged, and uh, that will give me extra energy. But having said that, let's get started. Welcome to our Evacuation Awareness Module. The purpose of this module is to provide a basic understanding of emergency evacuation protocols in the workplace. This module should take you approximately 10 minutes to complete. Select Begin to get started.
All right, before I go ahead, uh, can somebody confirm either with a reaction or a message in the chat if you could hear what the uh, presentation was saying? Just to Glad double check it. Yeah. Amazing. And do you hear that nice music that Glenn was talking about? And it's very interactive, very clear when you need to go to keep going. There's a few other uh, really nice features of uh, uh, Glenn's content creation, which I love as a trainer myself, trainer background. I love how simple it is to navigate. You have a menu that you can see and see exactly where you are in the course. Amazing. This is a very small course, and that will be less than 10 minutes for sure. Uh, but also, I like the fact that it does not let you keep going unless you have completed each section. Great for doing proper training, because if you say, oh, yeah, if I just go to the welcome and I just do the quiz because I think I know it all. It doesn't let you do that. So great, because people will really, it's very important to get the right training to have the knowledge and the confidence to do your job, especially if it's something that relates to safety, right? Or HR or something like that. Uh, there's other options here at the bottom that you can control like how loud it is, or maybe put it on mute because you prefer learning and watching content without sound. That's my preference, by the way. I learn more from actually looking and reading and you have the option in some of the courses to put subtitles, which is great. There so, are yeah. a number of emergencies which may require workers to evacuate to a safer area. Knowing how to respond and where to go during an evacuation can mean the difference between life and death. By the end of this module, you will understand more about emergency evacuations, including types of emergencies requiring evacuation, roles and responsibilities of wardens, what to do during an evacuation, emergency drills, Select next to continue. I just realized that I click next without telling you in advance, but it's okay. Uh, but I was saying before that, yeah, you can put subtitles in the modules themselves. So that way you can read what it says. There's a few other options as in, I want the text to be more accessible. So it will make the text nice, a little bit thicker for myself. Uh, and it depends on where you're watching or where you're doing the training, you can select Zoom to feed and it will feed the screen that you are. So that's a little bit of few comfort and uh, accessible tools available right there, which is very, very nice. Uh, but before we go ahead, sound was great. I like here how relevant the animations or the graphics are. And if you see how clear is what to do. And like Glenn was mentioning before, if it comes to, like, I want to customize this module, then you can add your brand uh, and remember, change the colors and things like that. So very versatile. And I really like the simplicity of it. And it gets to the point. So I'm going to go to the next slide once second. Every work site is different. So the types of emergencies which might trigger an evacuation are varied. Select the icons below to learn about some common emergencies. So this is the interactivities that Glenn was mentioning before. So you see how the graphics are relevant. So you see that green sign exit run through the door sign. That's in every business. So it's relevant to what it is. So, oh yeah, I see that. I need to go there. Uh, but also I like how interactive, see all these boxes are interactive. And like I mentioned, unless I'll look at them, it won't let me keep going. So I'll go. Fire or explosion. Natural events. Cyclones, earthquakes, floods, workplace accidents or medical emergencies, accidental spill or release of hazardous substances, terrorism or physical threats, weapons, bombs, etc. In this module, we are not looking at how to respond to the specific types of emergencies, as these activities should only be carried out by trained and competent people and only where there is no risk to themselves. The focus of this module is to learn what you must do once the alarm has been raised for an evacuation after one of these emergencies has been identified. Select Next to continue. So now I'd like to highlight here about the voiceover, like uh, Glenn was mentioning, like it's a professional voiceover artist. A uh, very nice tone, really easy uh, to understand, straight to the point, and it provides instructions of what to do next. In this case, they said, click, uh, click next to keep going, which is good because I can read it if, just in case I got distracted, I can, oh, oh, one second, oh, okay, I can see. Oh, beautiful, I got next, perfect. All buildings and work sites have evacuation diagrams posted on the walls at key locations. 
These diagrams show the site or building layout, escape routes and emergency muster points. They also show the location of emergency response equipment, such as fire extinguishers and first aid stations. It is your responsibility to make yourself familiar with this diagram and know the most direct exit route to your nearest muster point. Select Next to continue. Amazing, we're gonna quit going, but you can also add nice graphics like you see here on the evacuation diagram, uh, which every company will have. So let's go to the next. Emergency point. wardens are appointed by the organization and provided with specialist warden training. There are a number of different types of wardens, but they all share the same primary responsibilities. Improve and implement emergency response and control procedures. Prevent emergencies wherever possible through inspections and identification of potential hazards. Communicate hazards to other workers. Implement controls for identified hazards. Lead emergency and evacuation training, including fire drills. Know the location of all exits and evacuation routes within the facility. Help in the event of an emergency. In addition to these core responsibilities, individual wardens have additional roles and responsibilities. Let's look at these now. I love this part because I have been a warden before and sometimes an area warden and I get to feel what color it is. What, oh my God, what hat, red hat, white hat. Uh, and it's so different from uh, where I'm from. Uh, it's good to see that you can then graphically see what are the responsibilities and it's like you see, it's all interactive. So uh, let's start going through one by one very quick. The chief warden is the lead point of contact for all other wardens during an emergency. They're responsible for managing the evacuation to ensure all building or site occupants exit the area safely. Chief wardens must wear a white cap, helmet or vest during an emergency for easy identification. The deputy warden supports the chief warden with higher level responsibilities. They also ensure there is always a point of contact for other wardens in the event that the chief warden is otherwise occupied. Deputy chief wardens also wear white caps, helmets or vests. Area wardens are responsible for the safety of a specific area or floor, and this includes ordering and monitoring the evacuation of that area as required. They also must communicate and follow orders from the chief warden. Area wardens wear bright yellow caps, helmets or vests. Basic wardens are specifically responsible for the occupants. They must make sure all individuals are accounted for before and during the evacuation and make sure they move out of the building in an orderly fashion. They also check to make sure fire and smoke doors are properly closed in their areas so that fires cannot spread. Wardens may also be called upon to assist mobility impaired occupants or operate firefighting equipment where it is safe to do so. Basic wardens wear red caps, helmets or vests. Amazing. We're going to keep going, but I just want to highlight that I see there's a few comments in the chat and the Q&A. We're going to go back to them very, very soon. We are about to finish. Uh, so hang on in there. Thank you. Once an alarm is raised, all occupants of the building or site are required to follow instructions from the warden. You must make your way immediately to the designated muster point. Do not stop to collect keys, phones or other personal items. Remain calm and move quickly but in an orderly fashion. People can be seriously injured or killed from crushing or falls, so never run or push. Generally, elevators are off limits during an emergency. So if you are in a multi-floor building, use the designated emergency stairs. Proceed immediately to the muster point and await further instructions from the warden. Pay attention to the warden and help identify the people around you when the role is called. If you notice someone is missing or someone appears injured or distressed, bring this to the attention of the warden. Do not leave the muster point or attempt to re-enter the building unless you have been instructed by the wardens that it is safe and permitted to do so. Select Next to continue. Training and familiarity is the key to a fast and efficient response in the event of a real emergency, both for the wardens and the occupants. As such, you will be required to participate in regular emergency drills. These drills may be a simple evacuation 
or cover a range of potential emergency scenarios. Participation in drills is mandatory, so always take these training sessions seriously and treat the wardens with respect. Select Next to continue. We're almost getting there. Uh, and yeah, this is like sometimes when there is an emergency drill, it's good to refresh what needs to be done, what are my responsibilities, what should I do, what I shouldn't. But I like that. I always remember the beep, beep, whoop, whoop, the siren sound because I always, which one is which? And then when we do these kind of emergency drills, it reminds you, oh, okay, the beep, beep is just an alert and waiting for instructions. The whoop, whoop means, yeah, which is happening. Let's evacuate and meet at the master point. So this is a good refresher. We normally do it once a year. Uh, you might be doing it once a year as well. To ensure that you have understood the information in this module, please answer the following questions. Select Next to continue. All right. I am excited because this is the part that I love you to support me. Uh, I have not conducted this uh, module in full, so we're going to do it all together. It's only five questions I saw in the content here. So as you can see, remember, you can see, oh, whatever. Oh, okay, just five questions. Easy. Well done. So I'll read the question, I'll put it on the screen, and then please pop it in the chat. What do you think the answer should be? And then I'll just uh, have a look and then we'll do it together. All right, let's get started in three, two, one, quiz time. All right. Where should you go immediately when evacuation alarm is raised? Oh, we got a few options here. So I'll wait for somebody to pop it in the chat. But Did while we wait, Pop it in the chat and uh, we'll throw it back to you once we've had a few answers, Antonio. This yeah, look, what, what, while we wait, I'll tell you what, I'd love to go home, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely not the elevator. I remember with that graphic, like elevators that are uh, first aid station. I don't know. Uh, so I'm very between these two because, but most likely, what do you think? Uh, what's coming in the chat, Christina? I can't I see, I can see but. I think I think everyone's on the ball here. We have Master Point as a uh, clear winner. Winner, winner, all right. I'll follow you. You are my eyes. You are my you are my brains right now. So there you go. Oh, okay. Now let's go submit. We'll see. Drum roll. Oh, Ooh, one second. Do you hear that nice uh, yeah. chime? Oh, amazing. There you go. That's what you were talking it, yeah. about. Yeah. That's like, you well done, take a sticker. Like I got a well done sticker right now. Uh, but that's what Glenn was saying before, like the sounds and the nice like chimes and sounds like, correct, perfect. All right, now we know how these work. Let's keep going on the next four. All Ooh, right, guys, that. remember? All right. Where will you Add find your information on emergency master points, escape routes and emergency equipment? Oh, I like this interactive, like drag a slider kind of thing. So, Oh, one second. Definitely not, definitely not on the internet. Nope, at the first aid station, definitely not. So it, it'll be between these two. Hmm. I guess at the master point, you're already there and you're already out. So there's nothing to see there. So what the, what, what the audience says, please. Again, a clear winner and everyone's so clever of an evacuation diagram. I um right. I'd love to add in here too. I love the fact that it's not just always a radio button to answer or a click or something like that. It's actually going to and keep in mind everyone, I actually haven't seen this um in action this exact course. So to see that this is going to enable your staff to keep on their toes and and keep um within the actual module and keep on top of it because they're not just clicking buttons. They they've literally got to do different actions. Oh, this is great. Yeah, I agree with Christina. Like just the fact that it's different, it keeps you engaged. And I want to do more. Like I can do this all day. Like, but let's go here. All the uh, the audience has voted. So I believe in you. Yes. Oh. All right. Uh see, let's go. Brrr. Need that sound when I wake up in the morning. Oh, yeah. I'll be ready for that 22 hour <laughs> day. So during an evacuation, can you stop to grab your keys, phone, or wallet? Ooh, that's a tough one. There. I'd love to say yes. <laughs> Although, they're, they're, they're you know what? 20, this 20. is a democracy. Like, I'm going to go with Christina just to see what happens. Just, you know, for science. Oh, sorry, Christina. Oh. I, you, you need to keep trusting the no, audience. What? So, so what, what this was everybody saying? 
obviously I'm pretty sure Everyone they say no. Everyone has said no, except we've won, we've got another little rebel like myself saying yes, he'll do it. So look, I get it. You said yes because you know, in our phones we have all our precious memories, family, friends, pets, but most likely keep your phone in your pocket and yes. then that way you don't have to go back. Yes. All right, let's go with no. Perfect. Oh, I, I like, I never, like as Christina said, I never seen this fully in action, uh, this module. So it's good to see like when it's wrong, it tells you, okay, that's not correct. And then you go back and then you do it again. So good, brilliant. that's really cool. Yeah. And you're not allowed Ooh. to proceed. Are you allowed to proceed without, um, like if you get it wrong? Nope. Uh, so that way it makes you sure that you learn properly what needs to be done, what's the... Okay the goal of the activity before you move ahead, which is very important. Okay, this one is gonna, this is the one that I always forget, by the way, like I always get it wrong. What color hat or vest will an area warden wear during an emergency? Ooh. I'm gonna put my hand up and say, I don't remember. Let's see what but our audience says. I think our audience has been paying attention, which I love, so thank you guys. And everybody is saying red. Oh, red, all right. Our rebels back and saying yellow, but red is the majority. Look, so what they said, red goes faster. That's what the area warden are in red because they like come here, come here quick, and they check everybody. Now I remember from the content like what the responsibilities are. I, I think you are all correct. So thank you for confirming that. Oh, see, is not. Hey, so I, I think I think, I think a rebel has rebels. won. Yep, let's go yellow. Oh, well done. Like, see, look, I got lost in there too. So can't be good at everything, right? So well done <laughs> uh, uh, to a rebel uh, fellow like Christina. And last but not least, uh, before we finish the course and it's completed, is participation in an evacuation drill mandatory? Ooh. So If it's not, I should be. I think it's very important, even though we during the time of Jesus Christ, here we go again. I'm in the middle of work, but it'll save us. So we, we need to be mandatory, I think. But yep, what, everyone's what agreeing. Yep, mandatory. Yep, perfect. Logic is proving yes. And correct, oh. Mondo. Oh, perfect. So this yeah, is how... Did. Knowing how to respond and where to go during an evacuation is critical for the safety of you and the people around you. If you are unsure of what to do in an emergency for your specific work area, please contact your supervisor or discuss with your local warden. That now concludes our module. Thank you for your time and attention, and we look forward to your continuous contribution to our workplace. Select Finish to exit this module. Oh, how cool was that? So it nice, makes a little nice summary of what we covered today. It was really quick. And also make sure that you click finish as in to save the data that it has been completed. So let's go through it because now I'll show you another couple of things on the online learning memory super quick. Uh, and then we go and have a look at the questions. And so that I've finished the course already. I'm going to close it here. Take it to this window one second. I close. So it should now log me back in or ask me if I want to log back in into our online learning platform and say, yep, your progress has been safe. So this is good to highlight here because sometimes you start a course and let's, it's, it's going to sound like, no pun intended here, you are doing a course, evacuation, and then there is an evacuation. And it's, oh my God, I have to go, but I need to finish this course. No, you stop, you go. And when you come back, whatever progress you have done, it will be safe. Or if you have finished, will be safe. So it could happen. It probably has happened before. Like you're doing something and then that something happens and we, you have to action it. But in this case, let's look back in. And now you see here, when we are back into Myers as an admin person, training manager, a learning manager, you can use our online learning platform or module to see, oh, okay, manager Martin just did the evacuation awareness 100%, right? Amazing. And it was last access today. Uh, there's also an uh, overview of who is doing courses, who started, who hasn't started. So I can go back and say, Mel, excuse me, Mel, you know, you said that you did the evacuation awareness. Actually, you didn't even start it. Maybe you just enroll for it. Can you please go finish it? Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. By being here means it will create a record in our training records uh, module, which this uh, online learning, uh, you, if you don't need to do online learning, fine, but if you have 
our training records module and you add online learning, they will talk to each other. Uh, and it's a good thing because when you want to create reports as in training matrix reports or gap analysis report, you can see, oh, okay, Antonio Manager Martin in this case, uh, he's done the course, he's fully ready to, comp he's, he's compliant so he can go safely to this ABC. Uh, and that's another cool thing of uh, how the system talk to each other. So I'll go back now and super quick, I'll show you here, if I refresh this now, this is my Myers system. You already have Myers. Some of you might have already much Myers. And look at how beautiful what shows here. So I'm, by the way, in the training records module, uh, I have filter here by my own name. So that way it doesn't show everybody. And look at what it says here. Manager Martin has done the evacuation awareness, completion day, and it's on green. Green is good. I've been naughty, I have to say. Like I said, you know, I've been busy, so I haven't done, but hey, I did my snake handle certificate training yesterday because, you know, that's when I was back in Queensland in the middle of the bush. Uh, here in Perth, there's not much snakes around. Uh, as 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 not where I live, by the way. Uh, but here, so you can see nice, clearly, what has been done, what's pending. Uh, and that's just a little overview of our training record modules and how it links to our online learning module. Uh, I think that's all from me, Christina. If you have, if the audience has any comments or anything uh, that it came across while I was presenting, I will stop sharing my screen now uh, and I will share back if I need to. But for now, I'm just going to stop. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that was incredible. And I'm so, um, I'm so bloody excited to see how this will all pan out. Um, I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of us. Um, Glenn, are you just, are you just stoked to see all of your hard work and effort up on the screen and just amazing, like, and play out so seamlessly and clearly and professionally? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was so impressed by the presentation and the back end of how your, um, LMS works. So it looks fantastic. I was a little bit involved in learning management systems before and, so I understand them. I mean, I don't spend a lot of time in there at the moment, but I do understand those systems. And it looks like you tick all the boxes there. Oh, and, 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 I, and also with the content, the one that you showed there, we also have like little drop and drags and that also with questionnaires. That one didn't have one, but there will be, um, and they're really cool. You know, you, you have to drag three answers into one box and two into the other or whatever. Um, they look quite good as well. It breaks it up, doesn't it, to make sure, like like what Antonio was saying before, to keep everyone engaged and not just stagnant and not just going through the motions of ch ch checking a box. Like it just makes everyone more involved and and um, on top of it all. So I love it. I thank you so much. Um, we do have one question. Um, I'm sure there's a few more coming through. So everybody send them on through. Otherwise, I'm going to just have to make them up myself. So um from Helen, Helen has asked, and I think this would be more, um, oh no, either of you could answer this. Why are fatigue, bullying, harassment, and psychosocial in HR modules not health and safety as WHS regs include psychosocial? Correct me if I'm wrong, Helen, but do you mean as in like that, that's what they're grouped under? Or um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I yeah. Think that's and, and it's probably correct. Yeah? It's probably correct. It could it could be in either, both. Um, I suppose we just categorise them because you know people that aren't in the health and safety area would probably just think they are like health HR topics. So it's a really good point, and it's something we should we should fix up there, or I should have fixed up in that in that presentation. And Tony, uh, look, I, I just want to add that yeah, Helen, yeah, good pickup. Uh, I guess it really depends on the business that you are, the industry you are in. And there's no right or wrong uh, with that course because what it matters is when you add it to your platform system learning, then you tie it to a competency. That's when it will be relevant or what's actually targeting. Is it a mental health? Uh, is it more on the uh, safety health area? Or if it's because there could be different topics. Uh, like one is more just as an awareness kind of thing, but versus another could be more in depth to help you with your health and mental health, which is very important. So very valid point. I love the fact that you picked that up because I agree with you. It could be, uh, it should be, but also it could be either. 
So hopefully this helps, by the way. I was going to say, is that something that when we're implementing or rolling out the courses, um, when you meet with either Glenn or a consultant from MIOSH um, to discuss your needs and your wants, is that something we can then put into categories themselves like at that point? Um, they're not necessarily always going to be grouped in that. Is that something we can um, customise as they roll out? Absolutely. Perfect. Yep. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we'll be able to to get on to um, whatever category you desire or is actually correct. So thank you, Helen. Um, Dylan has asked, can we expect more courses to be rolled out over time or can we request new custom courses? Um, 100%. Uh, I think I mentioned that, that we're going to keep rolling out new courses. Um and we determine it's really client feedback. So it's great to get client feedback. Um, sometimes we're guessing what we should be developing. And it's brilliant if we have a whole lot of clients that go, hey, have you got this module? We would really like this one. And absolutely 100% we'll develop that. And we can develop those, have them rolled out within a month. I was going to say that was my your general turnaround time for for developing courses. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have got about four new topics um, that we're working on at the moment. So there'll be another four new topics coming and um, ears wide open on new ones that we could develop over the next six months. Love it. We um, obviously the whole HSC um environment is ever-changing and there's so many different things popping up left right and center and it's not just classic black and white anymore is it it's it's so varied and there's different categories and subcategories popping up every second of the day and I know psychosocial especially and and ESG modules and things like that are becoming more and more prevalent every single day and more it's it's we often speak about this in in many of our webinars and it's like a a trilogy of of different areas of safety like mental well-being physical well-being but also like the whole psychosocial side of things and they all need to merge together to make a holistic safe approach to your workplace and i think if we all have courses like these ones represented on a system like myosh you literally can't fail and the amount of lives that you might save without even realising it is just going to be like you will never know, but you're going to you you're going to make such a difference, and that's that's what we're both here here to do, and what both our companies is it's our purpose and it's our soul and it's our main reason why, and we encourage you all to jump on board and not even to buy anything, but just to become aware of what is out there and what you can do for your company um, and your employees, more importantly. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Do either of you have any questions? I'm good. Yep, all good. Amazing. All right. Well, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, oh, Helen, one last question. Helen has asked the cost per module. Now, I will say, Helen, this is so varied. So what we're going to do after the webinar is we're going to put together an information package for you all and send it all out to you. Um, the reason I can't give you an exact answer is because it depends on whether you've got the system of MIOSH already, depends how customised you want the programs, um, the courses, sorry, how many people, how many attendances, all of those sorts of things. Um, but we do have all the information ready for you to go as soon as we get a little bit more info from you on your end. Um, and then we'll be able to put some stuff together for you and roll it out really quickly. So we're very excited, but I will send everybody um, the details for Glenn as well as Myosh and further information for us all to go through after this webinar. Um, and as I said earlier, we're going to be... This has all been recorded, so we'll pop it onto our YouTube channel. We'll put it on our website and our podcast channel. And I'm sure Glenn will share it with all of his um, database and everybody that needs to know anything on our socials as well. So if you need anything else from us, please do not hesitate to reach out. We're always here and we're always so happy to help you all. And um, we appreciate you all taking the time to 
spend the last hour with us. I know it's the the day before Easter break and everyone's raring to get out the door. So I appreciate that. And um, as I know, the other guys would as well. So again, a big thank you to you all. Thank you to Glenn and Antonio. We've had the best day already. So we're very excited to see where this goes. And um, we can't wait to chat to you all. Yeah, thank you. Have, thank a, great you. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. Bye. Easter. Cheers.